Well, what we were doing, we were holding the pivot point. They were swinging both flanks, and when we took this mountain, it was a Mount Crow. That was in, uh, that was close to Casino. It's about, oh, about 13 miles from Casino. And they were having a lot of trouble trying to take that. It was, it was a nightmare for us, you know, for them shelling us because they had both the observation points and they could look right, right down on us. So it was, uh, we lost a tremendous amount of people. Of course, they lost some too. There was two peaks and in the middle there was kind of a long valley and they put us, they moved us into the middle of that with the machine guns. So I was on a machine gun from, from uh, 12 o'clock at night until 6 o'clock in the morning. That was my job to, because we had so few guys, there was only about six of us in this position. And uh, was a lieutenant and staff sergeant. And that was, there was only four, four other guys, two of those were assigned to me. But we went up there about the 10th of, of uh, November, and it continued pretty doggone heavy for at least, at the very least, two weeks, till just before Thanksgiving. And it, uh, it was really nerve-wracking, it really was. It was, a, it was a tough thing for us to go through. Every, an everyday thing, I mean, you live with with death every, every, every day. Apparently, they figured that the Germans were all gone. So I was sitting there eating a can of sea ration over on the trail side, and I seen this guy coming down the trail, this German coming down the trail. And I told these two guys, I said, take a look at that. And this one, one guy said, let me take a shot at him. And I said, no, he's coming right towards us. Just leave him alone. He was carrying a, a hand grenade in one hand and he was looking at the wire along the ground and at the other. See, I said, he's coming right to us. And uh, so after a while, I turned to this one guy. I said, did you ever kill anybody? And he said, no. I said, do you think you can do this? And he said, uh, yeah, I think so. I said, okay, I said, I'll be, you watch me, and when I nod to you, you shoot them. And I'll shoot uh, in case there's anything behind him or anything, I'll take care of that. I got to thinking about it, and I thought, geez, you know, if this guy feels bad or something. So when I nodded to him, I turned around, and I think we both shot about the same time. Mm -hmm because I, I thought, well, if he got sick or was nervous about this, I'll just tell him, well, we both shot so we don't know who, who did it. Anyway, he laid there for about, oh, maybe a week, 10 days. We took his dog tags and we turned it in. And so finally I told the guy, I told these two guys, I said, we got to do something with that German. And there was a, somebody had started to dig a foxhole down, down along in front of me, you know, so I said, uh, you guys take and bury him there. I said, put his dog tags in his mouth so that that was a general procedure, you know, so that they would stay with the body. When they buried him, a couple, we were sitting there, you know, and this guy's hand come up out of the, out of the dirt, you know. So I went over there, and I pushed it back down, and I put some dirt on it. So, pretty quick, it happened again. So I looked around. There was a rock. It was about that big around, and about that long, laying there. So I went and got this rock and I pushed his hand down. I put this rock on it standing up, say. I said, now if that guy's hand comes out of there again, we're digging him up because he's not dead. I, 
I, I just thought that maybe, maybe he would mean something to somebody. That's, that's the only reason. I wrote directly to the president about this to start with. They, I spent three or four or five days there just talking to them because they said they never had a case like this before, so they didn't really know what the procedure was. Say. So they had, uh, they asked me, they said, what were you going to do when you found that? I said, well, I was just going to put the bones in. I had a garbage bag there. I was going to put the bones in there and take them down and turn them over to the police department. She said, you'd have been in jail for the rest of your life right here. <laughs> she said, you can't do that. She said, we got we to gotta coordinate this thing with everybody. So that's what they did. See, it looked like there was about four great big, huge boulders on top of that. Uh, right by the trail, you know, and that's uh, because I knew that I, uh, that it, uh, and the foxhole, where I was sitting, the foxhole that, or the place that they buried him was right down. I was sitting there, and I'm, I'm looking down at the only place it could have been, you know, that, and I seen this, it looked like a white cross. And I said, there it is right there, somebody found it and marked it. I went down there, and here the leaves had filled that whole thing up, you know, and just the top of that rock was sticking out of there, and it looked like there was a cross on it. Mm -hmm. A real strange thing. So I wiped all the leaves, and sure enough, that ground was sunk down, you know, in, the, in there. So I, uh, I knew where the hand was, because it was, had to be underneath, and I knew there had to be a bone or something there, you know. So I dug, dug down there, and I come up with this little piece of white bone, about that big. And so I took it, but it was so wet there that I could take and I could grind it, you know, to nothing in my fingers. So it, uh, so I knew I had the right spot. So I took it and I laid the stone long ways at the foot of the at the foot of his grave there. I got a letter from the German government though thanking me. And they said he would be buried at a German cemetery at Salerno or at the Casino. Well they asked me if I wanted to be there. And I said yes, but you know I'd already spent four or five thousand dollars on this business, you know, renting a car and all that and the trip over there and all that in the hotels and everything. So I told him, I said, yeah, I said, uh, I could make it easy for him if I was there because I know exactly where it's at. But I said, I would appreciate a little help with the flight over there or something, you know, I said, because I'd invested quite a bit of money in it the way it was. But I never heard back from him. <laughs> that was the end of that.